Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kayla and I make videos about all things BPD. If you're here today, it's probably because you're curious to find out more about BPD and medication. So let's get into it. When it comes to mental illness and medication, it can be really difficult to figure out what is the best thing for you. And when we speak about BPD, there doesn't exist one specific drug or psychiatric med for it. And this is the reason why a lot of people who do have BPD end up on multiple medications to address the different symptoms that they are experiencing. So if there doesn't exist one specific medication for BPD, why even bother taking it? Well, there's a few reasons why. So things such as reducing symptom severity, improving overall functioning, treating co-occurring conditions, so anxiety and depression, or just reducing the overall risk for suicide. Often individuals with BPD will have core beliefs such as feeling fundamentally defective or unworthy and medication will unfortunately not address these things. This is done through therapy, but what medication can do is to help with these outer symptoms. So whether that's the anxiety that you feel when speaking to your therapist or the deepening sadness that's preventing you from getting the appropriate treatment or just the simple impulsivity that you may feel in day to day. So medication can help with these symptoms, which makes the overall process of getting help and going through therapy a lot easier. When it comes to BPD and medication, there's a whole lot of different variants and types that we can use. And one large group that we often see is antidepressants. Now, antidepressants were typically created for major depressive disorder, but later were found to be useful to treat the low moods associated with BPD. So clients will often be given MAOIs, SSRIs, tricyclics or tetracyclics, antidepressants. The second big group of medication for BPD are antipsychotics. Now, when the term borderline was first coined, clinicians believe that those who had borderline were on the border between neurosis and psychosis. And this is where the testing and trying of antipsychotic medication was used to address BPD. Antipsychotics have actually shown to reduce anxiety, impulsivity, anger, hostility, and paranoid thinking in those with BPD, which is great because these are symptoms that can be very impairing in the whole healing process journey. The third category of medication often used are mood stabilizers. Mood stabilizers, so with properties such as lithium or anticonvulsant, so seizure medication, have been shown to reduce impulsivity as well as the rapid mood fluctuations in those with BPD. The last big category would be anti-anxiety medication. And because people with BPD often experience generalized anxiety, so generalized anxiety is a common comorbidity for BPD, they will sometimes be prescribed this, these kinds of medications, so such as Xanax. The only issue with this is that there's not as much research in this category of medication as the other ones to show that this is sufficient to properly support those with BPD. Psychiatric medication, although beneficial, also does have side effects. So things such as insomnia, changes in appetite, nausea, low sex drive that can impact other areas of your life when you are taking this, which is obviously a disadvantage. Personally, I used to be on Celexa, which is an antidepressant and I did not have a good experience with it. For the first month, I had really, really bad side effects. So I had insomnia, very vivid and scary nightmares, night sweats, I was shaky during the day, I felt very nauseous, um, low appetite, jittery, scattered. And then on top of all that, when all those things subsided, I then experienced a very low sex drive as well as an inability to have an orgasm. So when it's you're trying to fix this depression that you're experiencing, but then it's creating other problems in your intimate relationships that creates more stress in your life. And the thing with me, at least the types of depressions that I experience, the BPD depressions are not the typical depression. They're depressions triggered by interpersonal conflicts and medication can't block those things from happening in your life. So I was still experiencing all of these deep down inside turmoil and the medication was really something that helped 
the very surface level things but didn't get to the core beliefs that I was truly struggling with. So overall, I was on Celexa for just over six months when I decided to stop taking it. And I used to also take anti-anxiety medication when I was in high school. I don't remember the name of it. All this to say though is that personally I did not have a good experience with taking medication. This is my experience and this is not to discredit the fact that they actually do work and are lifesavers for quite some a few people. So don't don't take what I'm saying as the ultimate truth. This is my truth and my experience with it and it varies very intensely from person to person. Society values a lot of practices as staple components to a healthy, well-balanced life, but unfortunately they still continue to stigmatize psychiatric medication, even though these meds are trying to reestablish these healthy processes. I used to lie about not only just being on medication, but then when I really had to disclose and talk about it, I used to say that I was on anti-anxiety medication and not antidepressants because in my mind, I thought that anxiety was more normalized and depression was more stigmatized. So I did lie when I was on Celexa about the type of medication that I use. And I think that's a very common experience for those who do need to take medication. There's a lot of shame surrounding this whole very taboo topic. The crazy thing about this whole thing is that, for example, if you have high blood pressure, you're probably going to take medication to prevent strokes. Or if you have high cholesterol or insulin issues, you're going to most likely take medication. And often people don't really judge others for taking these kinds of medications because they see them as essential for these people to stay not only healthy, but sometimes even alive. But when it comes to psychiatric medication, which does the same thing and helps people stay healthy and alive, they get highly stigmatized and judged for needing to take these things and they get classified as being weak. I want to emphasize the fact that medication is by no means an easy way out. For some people, breathing exercises and yoga and therapy isn't enough. There's something different in the way that their brain works and they actually need these medication to function at a healthy baseline level. Oftentimes medication is a lifeline and just because you're taking meds it doesn't mean that life becomes easy all of a sudden. These are medication, it's not magic. They don't make your problems go away. What they can do is to help people get from a very low baseline to a higher baseline so that they can actually get out of bed function a bit more effectively and go to therapy and get the help that they do need. Ultimately, when it comes to taking medication, do what is right for you, consult your doctor, don't get discouraged because it might take a lot of trial and error before figuring out not only a specific medication that works, but maybe a combination of different things that do work for you. And just remember that these are not magic pills and that they will not cure you. You're still going to need a lot of hard work and other kinds of help on the side to help manage symptoms and deeper core issues. As always, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below to let me know what your experience has been with medication and if you found something that has helped you along the way. If you found this video useful, be sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more videos just like this one about all things BPD, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below as well as the bell notification up top to get notified when I do post videos every Monday. On that note, thank you so much for watching and I will see you back here next week for another episode of On The Line.